What up, y'all? Thank you for tuning in to my moment. You rocking with your boy, stay humble. I do truly thank you for tuning in. Um, I appreciate you guys rocking with me, and I pray that this be an encouragement for you. Uh, we're continuing on with Be Imitators, and this will probably be the last piece, but we have to continue um, in Luke chapter 7, verses 41 to 50. We're going to cover that real quick today. This is where Jesus is in uh, Simon's house, the Pharisee, and he's eating with him. And a woman of the street, uh, a woman who's known as a sinner, comes in and uh, begins to cry on his feet and wash his uh, feet with her tears and uh, dries his feet with her hair and she's kissing his feet. She breaks the, the flask over his feet. So, so she's truly worshiping Jesus and he receives it, which once again tells us that he is God, okay? Um, and he's gonna show us that again, but check it out. Simon is like, man, if this dude was really a prophet, then he wouldn't let this woman touch her. If he was really a man of God, if he was really holy, he wouldn't let this, 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 this prostitute be touching on him like that. This woman that everybody knows is a sinner, right? So here's what it says, verse 41. Uh, we'll start at verse 40. And Jesus answering him said to him, so Jesus answered Simon's thought, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, say it, teacher. Verse 41, Jesus speaks, a certain money lender had two debtors, one owed 500 denarii and the other 50. So one owed 500 days wages and the other 50, all right? When they could not pay, he canceled the debt of both. Now which of them will love him more? So neither of them could pay the debt, all right? They both owe a debt, neither of them could pay the debt. And this is our position as sinners. Regardless of what you've done, regardless of how good or bad you were, the, the, the ultimate, the bottom line is you're dead in your trespasses and sins and you owe God a debt. And that debt we could never repay. So here it says that this, 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 this money lender, he cancels out the debt of both, the one that owes 500 and the one that owes 50. So he said, verse 42, when they could not pay, he canceled the debt of both. both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, the one, I suppose, for whom he canceled the larger debt. So Simon perceives, he said, well, you know, I mean, obviously the one, if you owed 500, you're going to have more love for him than if he only canceled 50, right? And he said, Jesus said, you have judged rightly. Then turning to the woman, and I love this part because he just spoke to Simon. Then turning to the woman and, and, and turning his attention toward her as she's weeping on his feet as she's worshiping him and, and guys this is so good because yo it doesn't matter your position it don't matter where you've been and it don't matter what you're going through what you look like all of that stuff is out the window when we come to God broken and our desire her desire was not for stuff her desire was not for even in this situation a healing or to get something from God her desire was God her desire was God. Okay, now check this out. Uh, he turns to the woman. Then turning toward the woman, verse 44, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. He said, you didn't even give me water to wipe my feet off. I done been out here walking in this dust and this dirt, saying, you, you didn't even give me the common courtesy of having your servant or, 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 or placing a bucket here where I could wipe my feet off. Since I came in, she hasn't stopped kissing my feet. Are you kidding me? Then he goes on to say, you did not anoint my head with oil. Say, common courtesy, okay? Middle East, common courtesy. You did not anoint my head with oil, right? But she has anointed my feet with ointment, with this perfume, this, this, this perfume that cost her something, all right? Verse 47, therefore I tell you, her sins, and now listen, who can forgive sin? <laughs> her sins, which are many, 
are forgiven. Therefore, she loved much. And he said to her, oh, I'm sorry, then he goes on to say, but he who is forgiven little loves little. So he don't say that's you. Instead, he just makes the point. She loves much, and that's why she's doing what she's doing, because her sins that were many have now been forgiven. Okay? Verse 48. And he said to her, he says, he said, attention directed toward her. He says to her, um, your sins are forgiven. Then those who were at the table, verse 49, with him began to say among themselves, who is this? Yo, he just told this woman that her sins are forgiven. They say, yo, who is this? What do you, you can't say that. The only one who can forgive sins is the person who they're committed against, which is God. You can't say somebody's sins are forgiven. He says, who is this? Who even forgives sins? Who is this guy? And he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. My friends, to this point, I don't think I've shared the gospel, and I'm just going to take a quick moment to do that. The bottom line is, we owe God a debt. So there's a separation in our relationship. The Bible says that we are dead in our trespasses and sins. And the truth is our old nature, our old man, who we are by nature, loves sin. Sin simply is disobeying God, missing the mark. You cannot hit the mark of perfection. And it takes perfection to be righteous or to have right standing with God. The only way to have right standing with God is through perfection. And the only one who was perfect is Jesus the Christ. He came and he lived a life and perfectly fulfilled the law. That's why he could tell this woman, your sins are forgiven. He perfectly fulfilled the law of God for us. He walked in complete obedience so that his life was perfectly obedient. And then he died as a perfect sacrifice for us. So that when we would place our faith and trust in him, he would take our life of sin and it was paid for at the cross. Not just what you did, but what you're doing right now and what you will do. He takes that and he, that's nailed to the cross and he gives us his life of perfect obedience to the law. So he gives us his right standing with the Father so that we could be reconciled that we could be known as sons and daughters of God. Not only that, but then he raised from the dead with all power in his hand. Death did not defeat him. So now we know that because he beat death, we shall never die. Though we die, we will never die. Okay? So guys, this is such good news, man. If you don't know, Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, if you don't know him as your redeemer, as your rescuer, as your deliverer from the predicament of the beef that you have with God, the only way to be right with the Father is through Jesus the Son. And it's not our righteousness but his. So the way that he loves this woman, the way that he looks upon this woman, and, 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 and the religious guys, he says, yo, 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 you, that you haven't even done the little. This woman has done much. She's loved much. This needs to take our mentality because the same way that he takes his attention off of the religious person and puts it on this worshiper of him is the same way that he looks at us when we come to him broken. It's the same way that he looks at us when we confess our sin before him and say, Jesus, be my Lord and my Savior. I believe you died in my place. I believe you rose from the dead. Now, come into me, use me, Holy Spirit, fill me up that I could be your witness. So I would encourage you, if you don't know Jesus Christ today, man, turn to him for the forgiveness of your sin. You don't need some big elaborate prayer. You don't need somebody to lay hands on you and you fall out and get zapped. The bottom line is you must be born again. And that is a work that the Spirit of God does. Even if you're watching this video right now and he's stirring something in you, there's already been some things happening on the back end. 
I urge you, come to Christ. Come to him. And he will not leave you. He will not cast you out. He will look on you just like he looked on this woman. And he will tell you, yo, your sins are forgiven. <laughs> it's good news, man. You can have relationship with the Father. And then he will begin to use you for his glory. Love you guys, man. God bless you. This is your moment.